Hello and welcome back to Round the Archives in Conversation. Lisa is here. Hello. Martin is here. Hello. Paul is here. I'm here. Hello. Hel- hello. And Rose uh, is here. And Rose Cat is here also. Hello, Rose. Well, Dini wa- was here, but he's gone again. <laughs> uh, but we thought we'd carry on where we left off uh, with what we have been watching. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Martin, do you want to say what was going to be next on your list? Because you, I remember you, you'd, you, you'd written you'd written a list, hadn't you? I had written a list. I, I, I can't actually remember what we talked about last time. It's been so long. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I did. I, I did want to. Uh, I mean, I, I, I sort of cover a few things. Really, is, is that one of the things that that has uh, intrigued me over the last few weeks is is Bob Ross. I don't know if. Uh, any of you have been following Bob Ross it's been on 7 o'clock on um, The Joy of Painting 7 o'clock ah, no. on for last mm-hmm. few weeks on Monday to Thursday uh, where basically every episode Bob paints the same painting <laughs> but you know, that's <laughs> nice it's very relaxing, he's got a very, he's got a very soothing and, uh, voice and very positive outlook on life even though you know he's been dead a very long time but uh, it's just a, it's just a very very nice half hour and i'm really glad the bbc did it and i'm really glad it's there to listen to uh, to watch i should say and um yeah it's fabulous well it's just all about technique and for an old painter like me you know an old, an old dauber it's actually quite fascinating to see how how interestingly simple those really complicated looking paintings can be. I mean, he's using oils, I've never used oils. So, you know, it's not something I'm ever gonna try, but I just find it a very soothing half hour. It's like the paint along of Nancy for, for the Americans. <laughs> I remember paint along with Nancy. And mm. I, I was never any good at painting. Um, but I, I, Oh, come we, on, you've, you've, you've well, done painting. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I've, I've daubed, <laughs> that's about it. But I, it's one of those shows that I've tried searching for a whole episode and it seems almost impossible to find. So I don't know quite where it's hidden away these days, but yeah, I, I would be interested to see because they were what about 15 minutes long, were they? Or uh, well, half, you know, half an hour, so they paint along with Nancy Kaminsky, yeah. she was that's Nancy right. Kaminsky. Yeah. And uh, it was it was kind of part of that afternoon lineup that was on ITV when we were in the, in the school holidays. And there was that, and the amazing world of Kreskin, Ooh. and um, <laughs> and uh, things like looks familiar, you know, with uh, with uh, Dennis Norton, and they were all in this sort of afternoon slot. And uh, but I, I seem to remember that Paint Along with Nancy and Kreskin went together. Now Nancy used to do a different thing; she would chalk the drawing first and do a grid, and it was very much using a palette knife and slapping it down, and you know, and, and wearing a, uh, a Demis Roussos outfit. One of those. <laughs> Kaftani things, but uh, but yeah, it was it was. It, it, I tell you, when you were like twelve, fourteen years old, and you had you know you had summer holidays, and you didn't want to go out and play football or actually meet anybody, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. I, I love paint along with Nancy, and she always seemed to do very nice still lives. I seem to remember there was always a still life. I may be completely wrong about that, but that's how I remember it. And they always seemed to be blue as well. <laughs> and this is the thing. Bob, Bob has got this thing where he puts wet. wet a wet white onto his ca- a canvas and just sort of uses brush strokes and to blend the white into the colors he puts on and it's magical and uh, i mean i you know i mean obviously i, I know some of the old painterly tricks uh, but my better half every time he does one of these paintings sometimes we don't have the sound on because she's on the phone and she just looks at me and goes how do you do that that's that's three three <laughs> strokes with a with a with a, a palette knife and, and and that looks like a mountain how how, how does he do that fabulous <laughs> Absolutely, but what about you, Paul? What have you been uh, casting your well, eye over recently? Well, I, I've decided that I'm going to tell you about some of the things that I hadn't been sure about telling you about, in case I did articles about them. But because because that could be months or years away, it seems silly not to mention that I'm watching them. So, um, so I've un- I've, 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 I'm opening my box of, <laughs> of, of things I've been watching, and I'm going to tell you about. So, um, one of these is um, Lovejoy. 
which I've had the box set for a, a, quite a long time now. And I think I watched like a couple of the discs of the first season. Because the, the weird thing about Lovejoy is that the first season was made in 85, shown in 86. And then there was a whole five years before they um, uh, they made any more. And then they made four or five more seasons after that. Mm. Um, and and you, you can't really tell... It's the odd haircut that's different. But you, the mullet. <laughs> yeah, that does come between seasons one and two. Really? But, yeah, yeah right. but you wouldn't you wouldn't um, necessarily say, "Oh gosh, it's five years," because everyone looks relatively, you know, the same. Um, uh, and there's very little change in the style of. I mean, they use the same title sequence, and just there was a bit in the first season. There's a bit of an annoying. Uh, you hear um, like a, an auctioneer kind of, and it almost it doesn't exactly drown out the music, but it's quite. a, a in, in obtrusive and it, it's it, it, it needs to be lower in the mix and they've completely got rid of it by the second seat so I was quite glad to see it, it wasn't just me being uh, pernickety it, it, somebody said yeah keep the title sequence but <laughs> but get rid of the although there is a there is a, a, a like a portrait of of Lovejoy uh, of Lovejoy that's been added to the Mm-hmm. Um, the title. So otherwise, it's the same title sequence even in, after in, five years. <laughs> inspired a million daytime TV uh, programs about, well, about antiques. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, I did wonder if if they decided to bring it back because um, it came back in ninety one, and that's the last year that Bergerac was was on. But they would have crossed over the the, mm. the second season of Love, Lovejoy and the and the, la- the last season of Bergerac would have been on the same year, so it wasn't, it's, it's, it wasn't brought back, yeah. it doesn't seem to have brought, been brought, brought back because there was a gap. Um, no, is there any reason why there was a five-year gap? I mean, was it, yeah. did, did uh, Ian McShane go off to be famous in Hollywood and not make it and come back or anything like that? Was I, it? I, I, don't, I, yeah, I don't actually know, because as we said before, some of these programmes, there's, 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 there's no, there isn't no the information. Books. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure some, somebody knows somewhere. But, but I mean, is it exactly the same cast? Completely. I mean, it, there's, it's there's, Chris, um, Chris Jory is he in both? Yeah. You know, he carries yeah, over. And, oh, right. and of course, he's done Doctor Who in between. Yeah. Um, uh, and and I, I didn't even realise that Chris Jury was um, one of the possibles for the Seventh Doctor. I very, very recently. Oh, it's in the been, book, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I've only recently yeah. been reminded of that. Yeah. Um, and um, there's, you see, there's it's a, funny when he did uh, Greatest Show. Mm. I thought. You know, I remembered him from Lovejoy, but I remembered Lovejoy had been on ages. And I was just trying, did they, I mean, did they make like a lot and split it in two or anything? No, like that? well, not that I know of. They just made no. the one season of 13, or 10 or 13, the first season. Right. Um, and then they just had that big gap. Um, mm. And, and the only, there's one character who doesn't come back in season two, but comes back later on in the season, series. Oh, right. um, and, I mean, it, there are a lot of, you know, guests guest stars yeah. um, in the same way as there's quite a lot of guest stars in Bergerac but uh, uh, I'm looking forward to there's a three part Joanna, Joanna Lumley <laughs> cameo, cameo where she, well not cameo she plays a character that goes across three episodes I'm looking forward to that Joanna Lumley turned up what a surprise <laughs> no surely uh, it's not there's not a series no I mean she, she's very rare with her appearances <laughs> well that must I don't know whether that probably she probably came into it around the time that she started doing absolutely fabulous Yes, um, so. Because if it's about the third season, that would be about the same year as the first season. Absolutely fabulous. So, yeah. Unless she did it all as a job, you know. We will book you for this, and then you do that. Sort of yeah. I must admit, I, I absolutely, I, I think Dudley Sutton was a fabulous, fabulous actor. I, I, loved, I know he was a bit of a rebel in his youth, yeah. Yeah. but I, I made a, a special. Po- we went to Edinburgh uh, a couple of years in the early two thousand and something. Went uh, and one of the I went to see his one man show just because I remembered him being Tinker and being fabulous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's a great, he was a great guy. Uh, he's sort of um, there, there. There were sort of episodes where um, in the first season he wasn't necessarily in every episode, and he seems right. to be like more brought in um, that he's more definitely part of the team, sort of thing. Or, yeah. or, um In this second season, far right. beyond. Uh, okay, but. Uh, yeah, it, so, so I've never never seen them before, so I am I am sort of watching for the first time. So yeah. I, I I think as I said before, it's nice to watch stuff 
the mm. old stuff that's new. <laughs> I, had a, I had a colleague who was terribly taken with Lady Jane. <laughs> 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 but equally, he, he immediately switched his affinity to Caroline Langrish. <laughs> <laughs> so he had no loyalty whatsoever, that guy. <laughs> I, for, I forgot that... Um, I've forgotten the name of the actress now uh, who played Lady Jane, but she uh, she was in a quite recent Doctor Who. Um, Phyllis Logan. Um, yes, Phyllis. Yeah. She was in. Was it last? Like not this season, but last season or something. Yes, yeah, she was in in the um, Battle of Brownskill, whatever mm. it is. Of Colos. Bless it. Bless it. I've actually yeah. just Let listened to her being the voice of Mrs. Bird in the uh, the new Paddington series. Oh, right. Yeah. So. Yes, li literally. Literally, we, we, just we've, before yeah. This. We we started recording this five minutes after you you watched the new Paddington. Yes, you? I could only watch one episode because it made me very sad. Oh, why was it sad? Because he was because he was friendly with the pigeon and the pigeon went away. <laughs> <laughs> he rescued a pigeon. What was wrong with the pigeon? He had a poorly wing. All right. And then they nursed him back to health, and the pigeon went off. Oh, it's still wearing its top hat. Not grateful, was it, that pigeon? Well, it's a bird. It has to Dis fly. Disloyal. Disloyal, <laughs> I call it. I'm, I'm, surprised the, I'm surprised the Paddington was involved. He accidentally stick his wings together. And then, um, <laughs> there, is, there is a scene where he sticks lots of stuff to other stuff. Doesn't he get covered in feathers at one yes. point? Yeah. Oh, well, that, oh, well that, that's keeping the Paddington name alive. <laughs> but it's, it's very lovely because it's done by um, Heyday Films, who do the, who have made the film. So it's the, it's the voice of... Um, Ben Wishaw, so it's proper oh, Paddington. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, it's very lovely. That's good. I didn't go know about that. Talking, talking about um, going back briefly uh, to Lovejoy. There seems to be various different rumours in the last ten or more years of it coming back um, in some form or other, and I, I, I think it's passed from. I think at one point the people who did Life on Mars were going to do it in about the, like 2015. But then I think that's it's passed on again to someone else, and, and there were articles sort of late last year that it was supposed to be coming back. And apparently, Ian McShane has said he, he doesn't really think that they should be involved other than in guest stars. Mm. But he would like it to be maybe the daughter of Lovejoy, or or or, <laughs> or, 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 or he doesn't, you know, doesn't really th think that they're connected, but not connected. Yeah, yeah, because you know, obviously, there's no tinker now anyway. So, mm. um, and and. and uh, yeah, there's it, it, quite a lot of running around. It does need a relatively young, youngish, or you know, mm. cast. You can't otherwise it would be last of the summer mm. wine luxury. <laughs> do you think it would be? I mean, do you think it's one of those things that sometimes these things are just best left alone? I mean, do you have a do you have an opinion on such you know these remakes or or reboots? Do you think do you think sometimes they are best left alone, or does that not bother you? I, um, uh, I think after I think after all this time, it's probably. It, it would need a complete mm. overhaul. I, I, I mean, um, but it, it's a bit different when it was something like the Avengers and the New Avengers. That was, that it was quite nice to have John Steve for a couple of years in the seventies because he wasn't so much older. Mm. Um, and I kind of liked the way that it, the dynamic changed as how he was part of it. I know he was a bit. Mm. Why well, shouldn't they? Should they didn't need, really need me? But I, I think he played played a good part in it. But mm. so I think it just it does depend. Um, you know, obviously, mm. sometimes they just completely reboot things, like, yeah. like we're talking about Dynasty, and there's a current, there's yeah. a current series of Dynasty at the moment, which is just a reboot, I think. Yeah. Um, what do you mean? Do you feel sometimes they don't quite recapture the magic, and somehow they're they're relying on a lot of nostalgia just to get, you know, get the thing that that it's a brand, so people recognise the brand, so they'll go to it. But they sort, it's like I mean, because I I also watched the new Vandervelt recently. Mm. And I'm not a hundred percent convinced that's the best Thunderbolt I've ever seen. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think sometimes. So I, I, I don't know because what I think about when I I've done writing, I probably because I kind of write in the same sort of genre a lot. I mm. often kind of think, um, oh, you know, I need a psychic. Why, why invite? A, a, why invent another dotty psychic when I have a dotty psychic? <laughs> I have a dotty psychic, uh, and in the same way with TV, it's kind of like so many. How many new detectives can you invent? Mm. Maybe, maybe you should just find a way of, of, re, of re-energizing an old detective. So, so That's I can true. kind of see. I can kind of see from my own experience how mm. sometimes there's, you know. Well, um, you could argue, I suppose, that the I mean, Lovejoy 
if there was that five year gap it could well be that they were looking around for something to replace Bergerac and mm. and they thought well we've actually got this we could give this another go rather than you know trying to come up with a completely new concept I mean that was popular people liked it mm. let's, let's sort of go back and do that a bit more I mean I, I think they've talked about again possibly rebooting Bergerac I mean these the same sort of era as, um, again I don't know how they were thinking of doing that mm. um, but I, I know we, I can't remember if we were talking about this uh, on on here or somewhere else, but I, I, um, that 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 sort of legend that legend that you hear of um, John Nathan Turner being offered the job mm. of Bergerac if he wanted to get out of Doctor Who, I can totally see where that where he might have been offered that because mm. there's a point with about two seasons left of Bergerac where I think a new team did come in, so presumably mm. that is the point where he would have been offered it. Because mm. I think a lot of people leave, and a lot of the writers who were associated with Doctor Who no longer... Well, some of them weren't around anymore, but um, a lot of the... Ca- I think the guy who invented the um, Ice Maiden character played by Lisa Goddard, that mm. she never, she doesn't appear. So presumably when he went, he took the copyright of her character away. Mm. So there is a definite change of, uh, uh, well, I guess, of production and shift, or, uh, which could have been, I guess, where John Nathan Turner, if he'd have said yes, maybe that's where where he would have come into it because mm. uh, that would have been around the, the end uh, around, around sort of the very late 80s early very early 90s so yeah, I can kind of see you hear these rumours and actually when you when so we know it from a Doctor Who perspective but mm. when you what, but then when when because uh, of knowing about Bergerac I can go oh, okay well that story isn't just a load of old hogwash you can see, <laughs> it, see how it actually fits fit, could fit in historically for want of a better word but uh, um so 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 so, 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 so and Lisa, what have you been been watching? (laughs) (laughs) Well, Lisa, yes, come on then, give a few things away. Uh, Well, we've, um, as you may have heard, at the end of um, episode forty-nine, which was released this week, yeah, uh, we're going to be looking at Up Pompeii, yeah, for fifty. So we've just watched the second episode of series two of Mm -hmm. Up Pompeii, which I realise I think I may have seen more than of series two than series one of our Pompeii because I the second version of Ludicrous Sextus is more familiar than the first version yeah. which is Max Adrian though I do like Max Adrian he does a great line in tutting because <laughs> there's, there's lots of scenes where he's, he's tut 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 and then Frankie Howard get him to do a bit more tutting just to to you know carry on so we've been watching that um we watched a couple of episodes of The Master Spy yeah which has just popped up on YouTube. My jaw's still on the floor with <laughs> some of that. It has to be said. I'd never seen The Master Spy no, until I'd love a few to days see ago. No, I'd more because it's, it's extraordinarily odd. Cause it, um, it, so you've got William Franklin and... Yes. Who is it? Uh, Jenny... Oh, I can't remember why. Jenny, Jenny Lee, Lee Wright, Wright who, as Miss Moneypacker. As, yes, <laughs> it's not is... subtle at all. Um, why she has a broken arm in one episode, I don't know. I think I... it's because she was attacked. The whole thing is to find out who tried to to. to oh, it wasn't kill like her. it was in real life. I she don't didn't think like so. have an accident. I don't did know. She? Right. I don't know. So it's possible. Um, and you have got David Jason in yes. the episode we saw, and there's a bloke in it called Penfold. Yes. One of the things I've been watching, um, which I only recently. Uh, <clears throat> picked up. Mm. It's a series called The Frighteners. I don't know if you. Oh, know I got The that. Frighteners. I only watched the first one. There's oh, the, the, that's the one with the guy in the tower block. Yeah, I've watched that one, and I've watched the second one. And I think oh, the right. second one. Um, I, I suppose I probably picked it up. Still going back to having watched Tales of the Unexpected. Right. Um, so much following having done the article for episode, in episode yes. forty nine. Yes. Um, so I've kind of. Uh, I also picked up. A scorpion, the a scor- is it Scorpion Tale or Tale of Scorpion? Um, there's an- another right. anthology show from about seventy eight. I think that um, might, might still be in the wrapper, but yes, yes. Yeah. <coughs> it's but funny fr- actually because I've been thinking of giving Tales of the Unexpected a go, but I've only got I've, I think I've t- mentioned it before. I've only got the the ten disc version. But, yeah, uh, but I think that will probably give me enough. <laughs> yeah, because there are some as long as they've picked the right ten discs, because ah, well, because I know some people have different op- opinions, but presumably they've gone for more of the early stuff. As long as they've gone for the good ones from the later seasons, but um, the the episode. What did you think of that first episode of the Frighteners? Um, I liked it. I, I, it's funny actually. I, I've not been back, and I don't know why, because it's actually got that wonderfully convenient half hourness to it. Yes, yeah. which uh, which I, I do like. Um, you know, so I think that's it, it's kind of um, 
it, I, I, it's it's weird because sometimes I, I actually I, I worry that these things are going to be a little bit too gritty and a little bit too mm. brutal. I mean, it was uh, wasn't it Hitman Hiding Out or something? I can't, yes. I can't remember yeah. about it now. Yeah. And and I thought, oh, well, this is actually going to have some nasty violence in it. And of course, it didn't have nasty violence in it. But um, you know, it was just it's psychological. I was quite, I'm, I'm quite fond of psychological, but I do sometimes yes. mm -hmm. I get a little bit sort of concerned that I'm going to find it more disturbing. I mean, I remember uh, Hammer House of Horror mm -hmm. when I was a kid. And the uh, the witch one, which I think um, mm. uh, people remember the witch one, but mm. uh, I personally didn't particularly remember that one, but I did remember the Nicholas Ball one, mm. you know, where there's a house that dripped blood or a house that bled yes. to death or something, something, something like, like that. It's got a title like that. And I remember that. And I remember being really quite disturbed by the ending of that one. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but, I'd, you know, which is probably going to take people flocking, <laughs> flocking towards it. But, but it really did bother me, uh, that one at the time. Um, uh, the, I don't remember any of the others, really. I just remember those two, but, um, yeah, I have all of, I have all of, I uh, have all of that one and the, mm the Hammer House of Mystery and Suspense which yeah. was from slightly later in the 80s but. I think it's sort of the kind of thing that's on a again it's on the shelf but I've not actually yeah. opened it it's uh, um, it's kind of weird I mean many many years ago I, I spent a small fortune on the you know the ghost stories for Christmas yes, set from that, yeah. uh, the BFI one which yes. was which was cost an arm and a leg, <laughs> you know. I mean, it was, and I've not opened it. I've still not opened it, and I kind of think, well, I might be too spooked by it. I might not sleep. I've been perhaps readjust the more. Blood I have. I have very bad memories. Here, I think. <laughs> yeah, I have very bad memories of being. I, I I used to live in a flat on my own, and I remember having very very bad memories of watching The Shining on mm. Sunday night, and The Shining freaked me out. It oh. really did mess with me watching that on my own. It just and I, I had to, I had to go to bed. I literally had to go to bed with the lights on. I was that. <laughs> I, I sort of had to train myself into horror films because I think I knew that I liked like scary cliffhangers and things mm. like that. But when I was at university in my first year, I remember I had about a week or so left in the house before yeah. whenever, whenever we had gone, and um, and we, we were quite near a blockbuster video. But I was. I used to go up there and I'd buy the videos that were five pounds. Yes. So I bought things like Night of the Living Dead and Evil Dead and 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 um, Day of the Dead and things like that. Yes. But but I I would kind of whiz them through first to see right. all the scary. So I'd know when the scary bits were coming. Scary bits so I'd know what to expect. Yeah. Um, that was how I kind of trained myself into. I, I, I have didn't... now taken to uh, if if I'm not entirely sure I'm going to because I, I think as I've got older I actually get more bothered. By violence specifically, on on programs, you know, the the violence actually is starting to to bother me more when I see it. But I actually found again the other film that m disturbed me, and this is very weird, is Ten Rillington Place. Ten Rillington Place oh, yes. freaked me yeah. out when I watched it as a teenager. It mm. really did. It absolute. It's that thing where you just go to bed and you think, no, this was real. This was, this was, um, you know, this happened, and and this was this miscarriage of justice, and and you just and your whole your head just goes into a weird place. So that's why The Frighteners, as a series, yes. slightly bothers. And to be honest, even even Tales of the Unexpected bothers me slightly. Well, they do yeah. say they do say in the press release that The Frighteners is the dark, even though it came you know came mm. before it. It's the it's a, a dark, unforgiving version of um, yeah. Tales of the Unexpected. I, well, I, I mean, think Tales of the Unexpected is quite cosy, isn't it? You know, except for what there's the um, um, I've forgotten the name of it now. Um, there's one to do with a stalker, a stalker mm. on a bus with um, oh, right. which is, uh, the fly paper. That's what it's called, oh, and that's okay. that's very that has a very dark ending, and that's with Alfred Burke yeah. in. Um, yeah. It's 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 uh, well, we, it's a really good one. But very dark. well, we can bring Andrew and Lisa in here because as they've got both the sets in front of this, you can tell us whether or not my ten disc set is is the rubbish one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wondered what. Yeah, I wondered what was in what episodes were on the uh, <laughs> ten disc because ten disc is quite a lot. Um, uh, I can't remember how much the full set would be. Probably. To be honest, I picked it up in the supermarket, glanced at the back, and thought, "Oh, well, they're all the ones I remember." So I was mm. quite happy. You know, it was only when I found out later that there was the seventeen or twenty-three or one hundred and twelve yeah. disc set. <laughs> you know. what, well, Lisa, <laughs> it... Lisa is just crossing the room now <laughs> <laughs> to bring the whole Tales of the Unexpected collection right. over. 
So the, the, the episode of The Frighteners that I wanted to mention is the second one. And it has Jenny Linden as the main okay. character. And um, she, she gives a really good performance in that. Mm. Uh, uh, the Tender Set, I think, is the best of. So it's got all yeah. of the episodes on it that you would expect. So things like Royal Jelly and Skin yeah. and um, Poison and all those sorts of things. So did this version come out first then? I would guess so, yes. Yeah. Yes, because I, I... But then I remember... This... I was saying, no, I remember that when they were out in season box sets. I'm sure that's what the version that Nick has is the is the separate seasons because I remember buying some of them for him and thinking, oh, I must get this sometime, sort of thing. Mm. And then I got the the version from, that was in the sale the, the, with the th- the skinny the skinny boxes with all of the episodes um, uh, when it was about ten pound or something stupid. Well, um, well, this this. Um... Uh, is it 10 discs set on the back it says copyright 2015 network so what does it say on the back of of the other one let's have a look we need to go on to the discs i, I think, think we need to look at oh no it'll be on the bottom hang on uh so mm. that's 2000 it's later clearances no this is th- this is 2008 the big the bigger oh, really? set is right. 2008 so that's a bit mm. old yeah. but i got yeah. the, the the 10 discs desk box set from um from work, from from a, from a supermarket, and the the, the the full set from the sale. So yeah, because there must be at really. least seventy episodes. I would have thought on on a ten disc set because there's usually six or seven on each mm. disc because mm-hmm. they're quite mm. short. Okay, mm-hmm. but um, the trouble. I'm, sh- I'm sure there's enough to keep me entertained. Anyway, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, the trouble is 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 where is is you if know, you're a complete your own, your own yeah. and also your own personal. Um, I mean, they could. I think they can drop most of the American ones because uh, there are some one or two good ones, but the picture yeah. quality is pretty shoddy on some mm. of them. Uh, the American ones. I don't quite. Well, I don't know well, much about. No. Nobody seems to know much about why these American ones exist. Well, were they um, were they even shown over here? I mean, I, I, I really, again, um, I think Nick would know that because he yeah. was an avid watcher at the time. Whereas mm. I. I, I don't I think I probably did, but I don't know if I'd have noticed. Um, but uh, um, it is interesting though, because because you were you were say you also talking about the frighteners being a, the kind of dark twin, <laughs> the evil twin, if you like. But yeah. um, I mean, the, the the only thing I re- the thing that vividly remember is that they seem to promote it by a picture of Jeffrey Belden looking particularly sinister. Yes. And, <laughs> and I mean, is it, is, have you seen that one with Jeffrey Belden? Yet? No, I read that. Yeah. That's the the last episode on the disc oh, right. on the second disc and it's right. one of the most depressing ones right um you see this is the other thing you say like, this is why i can't watch like ghost stories for christmas it's like whistle when you come when i'll come for you thing i just don't think i can cope with it i think it would it would freak me out too much yeah you know? yeah i mean the one i watched with jenny linden was about a, a stag do right and um this guy uh, was mar- was about to marry somebody in his ex played by Jenny Linden mm. was sort of trying to convince him not to um, the funny thing is I'd seen her in a Lovejoy um, right. about 50 um, 20, almost 20 years later because The Frighteners is 72 mm. and I was watching uh, Lovejoy from 91 so right. um, so it was quite I, I, of course you know I, I, although I know her from the Dalek film mm. um seen her in so many different bits and pieces bits and pieces yeah over the years yeah. but see that's the other sort of slightly disturbing thing because actually i mean i don't i mean what, what did you say it was it was a stag do yeah mm-hmm. now you see again a lot of the uh, 70s things built around those kinds of social events are actually more disturbing purely about the the attitudes and the, and the state of the, the the way the world was then i i watched the the wife swapping galton and simpson playhouse and that's one of the most disturbing things. And that's supposed to be a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I watched those. I watched those first two episodes, and I'll come mm. back to it because I, I watched a few other things. I'll, mm. I'll tell you about later. I wanted, so I had an. I sort of had a bit of a TV watching afternoon, so I didn't want to linger too long on one series. No, um, but I should. I should. We, we, I, I can tell you more in a in a bit. Is there is there anything more that you've been watching, Andrew and Lisa? Got, um, Putting you on the spot now, aren't yes. you? Well, you've done some more crank. <laughs> you've done some more crank calls. More crank call, yes. So we saw Arthur English as a one-man band. Yes. That was a bit, that was a bit disturbing, <laughs> actually, was wasn't it? That was very uh. disturbing because having dealt with in the um, 
Jack Shepard episode mm. with the notion of autism. Yeah. So nicely and, yeah. and, and delicately. Delicately. Having dealt with somebody who obviously has learning issues. Yeah. And who's completely bullied by the people that he shares a squat with. Yeah. And for that to seem normal and okay. Yeah, because this, this one, it's like Arthur English is accused of like cutting this bloke's face with a razor. Yes. And given that mm. we only know Arthur English from like, are you being served and the ghosts of Motley Hall? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Disturbing. Yeah. yeah. It was very disturbing. And the fact that yeah. the, he, he actually sort of didn't seem to mind or he, he took it as... A joke. A joke. Or that's what seems to happen. Mm. You know, yeah, it was it was a bit disturbing. Yeah. yeah. It's, weird, it's weird, weird that. And just, just for again, for its time slot. You know, yes. but, but But for any time slot, really. Yeah. 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 It's probably a bit of a stretch, this, but did uh, Crown Court ever do that thing where they messed with the format and it, it turned out that it was actually a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> or something like that? Or were they always or a dr- pretty much... Or a dream. Oh, or a dream, yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> there, is, like that. There, there is the odd Christmas episode, isn't yeah. there? Which, right. which is John Le Measure. Mm-hmm. And it's something about ke- people kept escaping up the chimney or yes. something like that. Yeah. And then there is right. the, the surrealist episode, which I've never right. watched. Which is the old people who live in an old people's home that's at the top of the cliff, but the toilets right. are on the beach two hundred foot below, and they keep <laughs> fo- they, they they keep having to climb down the cliffs and they fall off. And oh. there are mattresses. Could have been made yesterday, mate. There Could have been ma- made yesterday. <laughs> there are mattresses at the bottom, but they fall through and end up in Hades. <laughs> and then they get in like John, John Leeson as a vicar. Yeah. Just what what happens to these old people when they fall through to hell? I've never seen right. to the end of this, end of it. And it is just mm-hmm. so strange. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. then then some um, what was it? The mountain climber bloke comes in and starts climbing over the set or something. Yeah. To dem- like it's from a Monty <laughs> Python sketch. It's very very strange. Yeah. I mean, because you get that bit in the Death of Dracula one where they fire the gun yeah and you're like okay <laughs> and the judge is like you're all going to fire this in here and he's, he's pretty bad blanks my lord and yeah. you know it's it's very odd but yeah, mm. I've, yeah. I've not got much crown court I, the, I, the only ones i've got are the ones that are on the strangers and xyy man disc because they feature uh don henderson and Stephen yardley so but i think any set any set that you can track down cheaply and you can't mm. track them all down cheaply it yeah. has to be said mm. um you're, you're in with a good bet of seeing some very good people in there yes um, yeah, sorry. i want to, i want to i just want to find out what that one is where i remember them frauding in the supermarket that's the only that's the one i really vividly remember which is a very dull thing to remember but i just i suspect it's just one of those the idea that they would they would bleep things through and charge you more sort of is the thing that sticks with you as you go shopping every week <laughs> I, there's not a week goes by when i'm at a, at a supermarket checkout where i'm i'm remembering crown court <laughs> but but yeah the other one we watched was as we mentioned on the video we did was the the one with graham crowden's boobs wasn't it <laughs> that, so, so graham crowden's written a play called boobs yes. <laughs> <laughs> graham crowden was a playwright and is he is he playing it just as Graham Crowden, uh, really? I don't think I've ever seen Graham Crowden do give a performance that wasn't a little bit over the top. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him I, give a normal performance. To be honest, I, I, I saw Graham. Crowden, I, I saw Graham <laughs> Crowden in Oh Lucky Man from 1973 this week, and he um, he, he does that. He does in that as well. <laughs> And and, and 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 Arthur Lowe is in it. Well, in that film, everybody plays lots of different characters, other than Malcolm McDowell, who just plays the same character. And, mm-hmm. and Arthur Lowe plays a couple of very strange characters. It's too disturbing to go into at the moment. But, uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, Graham Crown's in that Father Brown episode. Oh gosh, yes. the, the one with um, William, William, Russell. William Russell in as yeah, well. Yeah, gets a hammer dropped on him, doesn't he? Yeah, like Graham Crown. Yeah, from the top of that's the church. A, that's a series we should do at some point. Yes. We, the seventies, Father Brown. Yeah, yes. yeah. Because yes. I know, Paul, you said about doing the current one. Yeah, I shall, I shall yeah. at some point. That's yeah. on my list. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you see, you need, you need to do a brown, the- brown themed episode. That'll, that'll, that'll do it. You see, you do an old, you do an old brown. Paul does a new brown, and I'll find something with brown in it. <laughs> Paddington <laughs> we'll do a nice brown. brown cover. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we have cover. That'll be easy. We have <laughs> joked about doing a Gordon Gostolo edition, oh, haven't gosh, we? Oh gosh, yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that you just do something which Gordon Gostolo guested in each mm. each time. <laughs> Gostolo <Yeah>. guests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because his appearance in Elizabeth R is amazing. <laughs> it's right. just Gordon Gostolo as a Spanish <laughs> count. Or Jew, right. whatever he is. Does yeah. he do a voice, or is he? No, <laughs> it's just Gordon Gostolo. He just comes in and he goes, "Hello, hello, the Queen, hello." No, no, he's he's the Duke of Mendoza. So I'm he's the with, Duke of Mendoza. He's with, he's with, um, <laughs> is he, we, I've oh, got his you. name. He's with <laughs> Philip, not Philip. Just like oh, being on Dead Ringers, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Peter Jeffrey. Peter Jeffrey's the king of Spain. He's got a lot of things with Peter Jeffrey. And then he was in the in the Z Cars episode, wasn't he? Oh, God, where yes. he lived next door to the woman and yeah. she threw a bag of water over him. Yeah. <laughs> and he's 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 in um, Slinger's Day and Tripper's Day. Oh yeah, that's right. And he's in the episode of Who Done It. Oh god, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we could do a Gordon Gostolo themed edition, <laughs> no problem. I, I just, you'll be just, I, you'll be just divvying it up, right? You do that one, you do that one. But I would have to ask that everybody did an impression of him, because of course he's <laughs> he's in that um that Shadows episode, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, Dutch lit shoes. shoes. Yeah, because he comes in dressed as a skeleton, doesn't he? Does. He does. <laughs> yeah, then he gets turned into a frog. Yeah, he t- yeah, he's a frog toad. at one point. Yeah, or a toad or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Spare universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, the whole yes. universe of Gordon Gostelow. <laughs> there, there really is. Yeah. They've seen an awful Because he was. I, I saw um, a Midsummer Murders the other night and he was in that as well. <laughs> well just, just the same. Gordon Gostelow, yeah. yeah. Does, does he do good victim? Do you assume he's a victim. No, 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 he wasn't a victim. Oh, he was. He, oh, he's, just, he's just village busybody. All right. Uh, so, village yeah. busybody number seven. Yes, <laughs> so. I suppose because you've already talked about the crowd and being the the crowd and death scene is worth having, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yes, it's very um, very odd. I, I a couple of what come to my other shows I I was I've been watching I haven't been as dark as the Fighters. Um, I, I, this afternoon I watched three episodes of Bionic Woman. Uh, from, from the, I'm sure she's got the same noise that Wonder Woman has for jumping. <laughs> uh, I don't like the theme music of Wonder Woman. It starts off like a sort of it's going to go into a country and western song, and then it and then it sort of gets going. Yeah, it's like, it sounds like it's going to be. Like, <laughs> and then it, don't remember yeah, then it at all. It, it kind of morphs into uh, into Morph? a, a proper theme tune. Um, but uh, there was one episode where um, she played herself, but there was also a double. But oh. the double had like a um, uh, um, a particular accent, so she had to she had to keep doing um, the the accent. Golly jeepers! <laughs> she, yeah, she, I think I think it was a New Orleans accent. So <laughs> oh God, it's not like uh, the Enemy of the World, is it? Where like was she, it Gordon yeah. Gostel? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm the bionic woman now, and I'm going to jump over yeah. this this train. <laughs> oh my word! Oh, fabulous. You see, the thing was that you could always tell with with certain American shows that they they, they recycled the scripts. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, have, have we done the have we done the evil double one yet? No, no, we'll yeah. do that one. We'll do that one this week, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I've uh, I've got more bionic woman than I than I realised. I think I kind of prefer. Bonnet Woman because her acting is a bit and it's not that it's bad but it's a bit unpredictable she acts weird things in a way you wouldn't necessarily think or she pulls funny faces <laughs> um, uh, I don't she, she, acts, she acts like she, she acts she acts a bit, I do, I do like Lindsay Wagner. Though. I, yeah. I, it's, it's interesting the um, it because I I did pick up the first three seasons of Six Million Dollar Man, mm. but then I I couldn't be bothered buying years four and five. <laughs> Yeah. But then the Bionic Woman came up in a sale, and I was on holiday. I sort of booked it while I sort of ordered it while I was on holiday, and I bought it because it had the you know the follow up films that they did, the reunion films were in the yeah. Bionic Woman set. So I thought, yeah. oh well, I'll get them rather than buying any more six million dollar. <laughs> See the thing, the reason I bought the six million dollar man was because the early ones had you know the, the pilot when they made several pilot films, mm. all of which had a slightly different. Is it Dusty Springfield? Does the 
there's the oh. theme song or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm there's not sure there's a really, it, yeah. really strange theme song. And of course, it's funny, I've been meaning for years to do you an article just about the credits to the Six Million Dollar Man because <laughs> I, think, I think there's a good sort of half hour article in the way that was done, you know, the, the way the lettering comes. It's fabulous. But anyway, the point is, right. <laughs> it's just one of those iconic sequences. But it could they could have gone with the one with the Dusty Springfield song and it sort of makes you think, no, well, I'm sorry. And uh, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, you're dusty, lovely, everything like that. But yeah, I'm quite glad they got rid of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably would have suited the uh, Violet Woman theme. More. It's worth tracking down. <laughs> it's worth listening. If you ever get a chance, go and see if you can find it because it, it's wonderfully cheesy. Yeah, the the, um, the the three episodes I watched today, there was one where she ended up in jail. She was framed for something. It wasn't quite... She didn't interact with any prisoners, so I didn't get That's my prisoner. That's another thing they have to do, isn't it? When you've got a female protagonist, they've got to have a jail episode, they've got to have a bikini, bikini contest episode, you know? <laughs> even, even in the $6 million band. Oh, bikini well, I don't think they ever got him in a bikini, but, you know... But well, who probably... knows? I've not seen every episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but she just kicked she just kicked a hold of the wall and got out, so she quite didn't right stay there very long. Um, and then there was I always worry speech. about their rib cages, but there you go. Yeah. When they lift up things. But, you know. Yeah. Then there was a sort of telepathic girl episode. <laughs> um, where was it a ghost or was it a tele? Was it? Uh. Was 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 <laughs> it? Uh, um, so so yeah, those were the last three episodes of season one. Wow. That was quite enjoyable. But the, but then I also watched again another box set we've had for ages, uh, which are so it, which is based sort of all new to me. Um, was charmed from the oh, late. Right. 90s through a lot of the have mortals. they remade that or are they just showing old ones no they have remade it or rebooted right. it okay. and it's currently still it's about three seasons in so it's still an ongoing okay. um thing but with totally different cast and everything but okay. uh, um yeah again we watched like the first season i think we'd started the second season um but i decided oh, okay well i'm gonna i, I want to uh, I want to watch some more, so I'm going to start from season two, and that's that's one of those shows that can be quite light, and then suddenly it can catch you with a because you know, mm. they do ca- they do do kill off characters and stuff, but mm. I think as it goes on, it turns into almost a bit like a not quite Dark Shadows where it's a bit soapy, but but I think it does get a bit soapy in a mm. in a in a way, but with supernatural characters. Uh, so, it's it's fishing it's like. fishing in the same pool. Yeah, it? which I probably mm. quite enjoy. It's definitely quite different from. I always used to think of it as sort of like the second rate sort of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but actually it's quite <laughs> it's quite unique in its, its own a, way. It's a and, first rate Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, yeah, it's certainly as as good at, mm. at times, and that, mm. you know, I'm not quite early on. I don't know. No. It goes on for eight seasons, so it, yeah. it actually was one season longer than Buffy. But, mm, right, so how's your um, how's your Dark Shadows uh, watch going, Andrew, Lisa? Uh, oh, it stalled a long time ago. Yeah, sorry, we, we, we got to... It was something about the brakes on the car, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I think... Yeah. Um, I can't remember what his name is. Yeah. He did something to Roger's... Brakes. Brakes on his car. <laughs> and then he took the so, car out. so how much have you got access to? Or have you got access to all of it? All of it, we just... just yeah, nothing was happening. <laughs> you were, you were waiting for the Phoenix to turn yeah, out, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. We were oh, on yeah. Barnabas Collins, and we'd never got that far. Well, Barnabas is about 200 episodes, <laughs> isn't he? So he's a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. What we have been watching, though, is The Golden Girls. Yes, or rather I you love have. The Golden Girls. It's, it's real comfort. That sounds bad, comfort TV watching. Yeah. But I remember mm. watching it as a sort of... Not as a child, but as a teenager... And really enjoying it because it's four strong women, mm. Um, mm. and then the fact that um, Dorothy is one year older than her mother has got nothing to do with it because the actress <laughs> that plays Dorothy is a year older than the actress that plays her mother. But I mm. always used to love the episodes where they do flashbacks to when they were younger, and it was yeah, it was great okay. fun because when I watched um, when we did the first Look Some Familiar, we watched Big John, Little John. I was going, oh, it's Stan from the Golden Girls. Because <laughs> Herb Edelman is, is playing And I had Stan. no idea what you were and going you, on about. I didn't have any idea. But it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, I love it. It's, it's a great sort of um, comfort watch. Though I did get slightly cross in the episode the other day because there's a, 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 a scenario where they think uh, Rose is looking after a chicken from somebody else. Right. And they think they've eaten the chicken and they all think it's really funny. And I'm like, no, chicken's a pet. You don't. Don't laugh at people who are grieving for pets. I mean, it turns out it wasn't a chicken anyway. It was a 
That's the history. plot of the first episode of Romany Jones. Yes. Oh. <laughs> With Arthur Mullard. Yes. Oh, Daly's there. Hello, Daly. <laughs> yeah. You're talking about eating pets. That's going to... That's going <laughs> to... <laughs> that's upset the cat. It has upset the cat. <laughs> yes. But I'm... Are these episodes? Of Welcome the Gold... to Daily Vision. Right. <laughs> are these episodes of the Golden Girl meant to be? Golden Girls meant to be a bit edited, though. Is I think right? they're edited and they're missing ones out. All right. So um, I do have the box set here somewhere, so I will dig it out and, and watch some more because mm. I'm really yeah, enjoying we've it. Got, we've got the first four seasons. It was a, a weird box set where it has the first four seasons. I guess there's a, a part two, which is the the next. I don't know if it went to eight seasons or whether it went more, but. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I've got the first, got the first four, and also, I I have sort of dabbled it and got like odd seasons of, um, now is it Maud that's got B Arthur in? Oh yes, that's the that comes. 70s. Yes, yeah, I'm and not I've seen got that. One season. Of, yeah, I've seen a couple of episodes of that, and I also, I know that Betty White is in the Mary Tyler Moore show, I think, but I don't think she comes in until, like halfway through or something. So, and I think she plays a hot because I think. If I remember rightly, what I've read about the Golden Girls is that um, uh, Betty White played a really horrible, or she was known for playing a really horrible character in um, Mary Tyler Moore. And I think they might have wanted her to play the B. Arthur character originally because she was known for playing. And she said, no, I don't want to play it. I want to play against type. So although we always think of, of Rose as be, you know, her, as Betty White being Rose and everything, and being like that sort of personality, that was actually her playing against type when she did that. She's, She's great fun in Boston Legal as well, if you ever get a chance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of, I'm, just, I'm, I'm still bewildered about this thing with the DVDs. Have you, have you noticed how whenever you buy a complete box set, they do another season, but they don't give you your money back because it's not complete anymore? You, yeah. should, get, you should be able to get a free season because you, say, you sold me the complete. You sold me the complete. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I mean that's what the thing with the Poirot, and they won't, they they don't seem to do box sets of one to four and then five to ten or whatever. They do. You have to buy one to five, then one to six, then one to seven. It's really annoying. Sorry, I just thought I'd get off my chest. Sorry. <laughs> well, there, there was there was a show that I kind of discovered on Netflix, which it's really supposed to be for teenagers, but it, it really it's <clears throat> it, it it's probably well, particularly uh, after what you said about Martin about not liking too scary. This is kind yeah. of. This is about that. This is about your level, I think, <laughs> in, the, <laughs> no, in the nicest possible not, way. Oh, yeah, it's fluffy bunnies. Yes, I know. <laughs> but it's still murders and stuff. But it's a show murdering called, fluffy bunnies. Oh my pretty, god! It's, 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 it's called Pretty Little Liars, and it's about oh, right. well, the, the characters are sort of well, they're about to go to university. So yeah. although it goes on for about six mm. seasons, I don't quite know how how they are supposed to, how mm. I don't know how many years that's supposed to take place over, but. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I saw that it was going off Netflix, mm. and I knew I liked it, and and because I like all these mm. sort of Italian Jallo movies and yeah. things, a lot of people were saying, "Well, this is kind of like Jallo light, mm. um, but it's made by Americans, so it's kind okay. of." Um, she, I, is... I, I, it used to be on Netflix, and then I heard it was going off, so I kind mm. of binged well, I won't it. Buy, yeah, well, I won't buy the, I won't buy the box. I want to buy the box set, but I won't buy it until I know that it's totally finished, because otherwise, mm. you'll buy the one to six. Yeah. box set and then you'll find there's one more season to come mm. so I waited until it had its final season and and um, uh, and it, mm. I think it is finished although they have tried to mm. branch it out a couple of times with other characters which, which haven't really worked out it's kind of um, weird actually with because the, the description you, uh, uh, my better half has been watching a lot of Netflix of late and uh, one of the ones was a thing called How to Get Away with Murder I don't mm. know if you've heard of that one yeah but, I think I might um, have seen some of that but I, I never I didn't take to it but it, but it was um yeah, that's sort of like some the same the same kind of setup. I'm probably completely misreading that, but there you go. Yeah, I think they're a bit old. I think they're a bit more like they are. They are at mm. university. I think the characters in that, whereas these are more, I guess, more buffy. murdering away. But I get but yeah. murdering away. I think, I think teen murdering. Well, I, I think it, in *Pretty Little Lies*, they're probably the same age, maybe as the Buffy characters are um, mm. mm -hmm. uh, in that. So you know, plenty of adults watch. Buffy, so uh, I don't know why it was, no. I don't know if Pretty Little Lies was billed as having to be a teenage program because mm. there's nothing teenage about it particularly. Mm. Too good for teenagers as far as mm. I'm concerned. It's, it is kind of weird though because I'm, 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 I'm not a complete wuss, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have, we've, uh, we've been re-watching the first year of uh, Criminal Minds um, the last few, last couple of weeks 
because uh, we fancied Columbo and so, and I found that on the shelf and we fancied that more. Mm-hmm. And that's, that gets very dark very quickly. Mm-hmm. I think Ma- Mandy... Uh, P- P- oh God, I can never remember. P- mm-hmm. <laughs> Him, anyway. Yeah. Um, St. Elsewhere chap. <laughs> um, he, 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 he walked away from it because he felt it was too dark. You know? mm-hmm. It was like that weekly horrible murder of somebody and it was okay when you... And so he, you, know, you talk about that. But I also recently watched the first Cracker. Mm. which I'd not seen since it was made. I didn't realise it was nearly 30 years old. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, you could you could tell, uh, you could tell, because it, it was Manchester before the bomb. It was Manchester, <laughs> you know. But, mm. And the thing that surprised me, well, I mean, because the buses are all the buses I remember getting, but uh, the thing that really surprised me was the, the trams were already running at that stage. You know? <laughs> well, but um, I know 61 numbers rather than 0161 numbers, things like that that make you think, oh, this is quite old, actually. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, that, well, but that that was quite schlocky in its moments. Mm. Well, the the other thing I've been watching, which um, I, I think I might have read about ages ago, but when it's American shows, you don't always expect them to be available, or they might have mm. be out, be already out of print. And anyway, I, I one of those things where you're wandering around on Wikipedia, and 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 I was reminded of this series called Harper's Island, which um, was I think it's made in about two thousand and nine, and it was a like a a one season series of 13 okay. episodes um but i i thought well it, it it sounds like a 13 episode slasher movie so mm. perfect for me um so i bought it it was quite, i found it was really easy, like really cheap mm. to buy so i bought it and actually uh, i mean it had lots of good comments and things but yeah. um i would say I, it's kind of interesting I, there is lots of good moments, but it is too long. It's a bit like mm. uh, I, I sometimes I, I've I've watched most of the seasons of American Horror Story, and some mm. seasons are great, and some of the seasons are appalling. And yeah. usually, whether they're good or not comes down to the fact of whether they have enough material for thirteen yeah. episodes. Um, also, you know, sometimes they've been given they've been given this amount of episodes, and they yeah. they just can't fill it. And they just rush and <laughs> and and Harper's Island is <laughs> and too suddenly long. the evil twin turns up. <laughs> Well, <laughs> or they go to a prison for an episode. <laughs> well, well, I think this is thinking about construction from, from a construction point of view. Mm. Um, when they when they get to the island, there's not that many locations. They no. Um, that there's a hotel and there's a house and and there's a few bits of woods and and really they haven't got enough locations to stretch. Them. <laughs> or or I'm thinking about like six part Doctor Who stories. How they mm-hmm. managed to make them last they you know they break them into almost two stories and, oh, and right. i think perhaps that needed some of that you know it needed a, to be sort of broken yeah. up a bit and have See, more. I, thought, I thought you meant it was like doc green and it was just en- endlessly oh and and there's the and there's the palace that we didn't know about last week <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i've got I've, i i was raging racing through it at the start of mm. like about a week ago and now mm. i'm kind of i've got three episodes left yeah. and, and i'm kind of kind of like oh i hope it finishes soon because mm. Because you know, I still don't know who. I don't know who the no. main villain is, um, um, or whether there's going to be yeah. a twist. Or but be- be- better off did a, a one season wonder. I thought that's, that would be something that would be interesting to talk about one season wonders at some point. Mm. But um, the uh, thing called Limitless, which was based on the film, and um, and that that only lasted one. You know, and you just kind of think, oh, this is actually not terrible. <laughs> that's quite. A, I think it seems quite popular. Um, mm. Quite a lot of things I mm. watch on Netflix seem to be like one-off mm. seasons, or um, that they even bill it as a, it's almost like a genre mm. in itself, sort of like. Is is a, um, I still haven't forgiven them for first cancelling Planet of the Apes halfway through the first season. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they should be allowed to. I think, I think it doesn't. I don't think it makes sense to either. I think that they need to find a way of wrapping it up because mm. for future sales, you know, mm. and. If it's something like the Planet of the Apes, it's a big, you know, it's a big thing with with fans. Mm. Then at least just at least wrap it up. Or, um, mm-hmm. You've got more chance of selling it in the future if you've got a some sort of ending rather than just stopping. It. I mean, I didn't see it myself. I don't know whether it literally stopped with a, you know, was, mm. was there was there a cliff. Was there a cliffhanger that never got resolved? Or? Well, I don't remember. As I was a teenager, when I was a teenager, I thought... Oh, oh. going back to... I, I was thinking of one of the more recent... Oh, versions. right. Well, there's a lot um, that just don't. They just don't get renewed, do they? And, and mm. some, I mean, I think something like Scorpion ends on a cliffhanger because 
they thought they were getting a fifth and then they didn't you know it's mm. it's uh, but uh, it, 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 I suppose it's difficult to plan for because American television is quite brutal like that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very, you know, it's like, boom, gone, thud, thud, the axe falls and that's it. You know, and then sometimes the axe falls and then it turns up on another network. Which is, you know. some, at least some shows, they axe them and then they kind of say, OK, we're going to wrap it up with a final mm. movie. Um, mm. Well, Homicide, and, yes. At least, at, least, at least you've got that. Otherwise, I think... You know, you've got to, with modern things, you've got to think about future sales. Well, the, the other interesting one is the one that makes a come comeback because next year's new program fails and they've got half a season to fill, and they go, "Well, oh, we could try that again." You know, I think Seinfeld was a bit like that, wasn't it? I think Seinfeld was a they only made four in the first year, and it was a bit of filler, and and then they just sort of it, it somehow accidentally got on air again and then became this massive hit. So. Well, I don't know how close. I don't know how close Neighbours was to just being a one-season wonder mm. um, because it changed channels after its first year. I don't know whether there was ever a point where it might have just... I mean, there were quite a lot of Australian soaps that mm. that, that ran, ran like that for a year and then never got renewed. It could have just been another statistic amongst those, but... Uh, um, but 35 years later, <laughs> it's, it's still on. It, uh, um, but but yeah so so the so yeah Harper's Island, Barnet Woman, The Frighteners, Lovejoy, yeah. and Charmed have been my main okay. watches this last week. A lot of it, a lot yeah, of them yeah. today and the weekend. <laughs> well, I was an saying, over in <coughs> pool, an over going, in pool. Go, going by that list, that that's you uh, definitely going into that's next the year, year then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that that okay, that, that that's next year planned out then. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love these planning meetings; they're marvellous. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, I've got a whole list before I even get to any of those ones. <laughs> I mean, I've, plus I've, another, sorry, as I say, plus another four that are already recorded. <laughs> come in, come, come ahead of that list. I was going to say, I mean, I've been watching uh, this last week or two. Be watching some uh, non-fiction things, which I wanted to mention. Um, the, mm. My favourite of which being A House in Time, which is absolutely fascinating and wonderful. Um, which is the history of a house in Bristol. Um, is it the same house every week? Yes, it's, oh, right. so they've done. I, I saw I saw the beginning of an episode and I thought, oh, this is kind of interesting. I just wondered if they did a different house, but it's the same house. It's the, ha- the same house. I've done three series, mm. and each series they look at the same house from when the house was built right up to the virtually to the present day. So mm. the, this ha- the house they're looking at um, this time is in Bristol and was built by. Um, which is quite topical, a slave owner. Mm. Um, oh, not him. A, a, a train. Not that particular one, because there's not a lot in Bristol. Um, but yeah, so I think the next one, they've got up to the sort of mid Victor- mid to late Victorian era, so they're going to be coming in, into the 20th century um, mm. for the next episode. Uh, and, and I've also been watching, and I know it's 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 probably quite light and fluffy, but I've been watching the Great British Sewing Bee, which is wonderful <laughs> because it's just it's just sixty minutes of Joe Lysett being telling bad jokes. The, the, the trouble with the na- that name, though, I just think of a giant bee who sews. <laughs> you know, I literally think of a giant bee. But it's you know it's it's just it's in this time where everything's so uncertain and and. Mm. There's not so, you know, it, not so mm. nice stuff going on. It's just, it's yes, it's light and it's fluffy and it's, but it's easy to watch and it mm. leaves you feeling happy at the end of it. So see, I, that's why I watch Spring Watch, and you know, I mean, that that tends to consume our evenings at this time of year. But I love Spring Watch. I, 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 in fact, I like it better this year. I'm quite liking the isolation version. I think it sort of feels more grounded and more, you know, local. But uh, yeah, I, I, it does. It relaxes me for an hour, and, and that, again, it's a bit like Bob Ross, where we started. But you know, it's I just find it very soothing, and uh, because I've not been doing my own walks recently, I find that sort of seeing a bit a window on the world a, a very wonderful thing. You know? I quite like Grayson's Art Club for the same reason. I mean, because I, I watched, um, I recorded uh, Chris Packham doing. Uh, he did a documentary. I think I had seen it before about the um, real uh, T Rex. Where they try and mm. recreate, yes, the, what the Tyrannosaurus Rex looked like and how it sounded, and did it have feathers or did it have spikes or 
and mm. how did it walk and it's really interesting and and they 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 sort of recreated what they thought it might sound like and it yes. doesn't it didn't they think it didn't actually roar but it had this sort of low growl which was it just, very it, menacing it just used to go wow i'm a t-rex mm. and uh yes, gordon <laughs> gosling well, never we used... played a dinosaur <laughs> <laughs> we did used to I mean it, it fascinates me is that sometimes you you look at certain birds and you just think yeah I can see the dinosaur mm. I can see it so yeah. I mean it, it, the sounds that the birds make you know are probably in many ways very similar to the to the dinosaur sounds you know oh scary stuff the other thing we did watch because uh, <clears throat> Better Half has this thing about clearing our DVR backlog we finally got around to watching Brian Cox's Planets which is brilliant uh. Yes, yes, I put that on TV, on Blu-ray, so um, I'm not sure where it is now. Everything I buy stuff, and it goes on the pile, and then it gets buried by other stuff. We had Jim mm. Alkalili on the other night during chemistry. Oh gosh, we? yes, blowing stuff up. And I was wincing, wincing all, all the way. He was trying to distill the <laughs> foss. He was trying. No, to... he's done it wrong. No, no, it's, well, it's not that. I just knew what was coming. That was the trouble. <laughs> he was trying to distill <laughs> phosphorus Most from explosions. urine, wasn't he? Yes. And then, yeah. yeah. And I was oh, going, we, all, we all we all had physics teachers who threw potassium in, in bowls of water, didn't we? Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, yeah. yeah it, it, you you have to lose your eyebrows to be a proper chemist at some point. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> That's the thing. Was, uh, my skybox is still. 90% full of old Top of the Popses that I don't want to get rid of. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's so, I find it so annoying that, you know, back in the day, if they'd have been repeating it on BBC4, I'd have just had a videotape and I'd have recorded it and then there would be no issue about storage. But now if I want to keep something, kind of it's stuck on the box, but obviously the box doesn't... I think there is software. I could, I could remove it from my Skybox, but I don't think I want to get involved in that. But. Um, but, but yeah, one day I'm going to have like one percent left on my skybox. I'm just going to vi better video today's neighbours, and that'll be it. Right. You'll just buy a new skybox, won't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, to, yeah. to to return to um, as we were saying about Master Spy, the thing that was really interesting about the recordings that were up on YouTube is that they are complete with adverts. Yeah, right. so the advert breaks are in place in full, and it's just looking on another world i like the bounty advert I, yeah i know why you like the bounty advert <laughs> yeah it's a lady in a bikini yeah yeah but what what were the other adverts See, they I came can't... in search of paradise yes <laughs> i can't even remember now because it's like yeah yeah but there was a casual gtx one yeah there was a paint one a dulux with a dog and lots of puppies and I can't remember any of the others. Yeah. There'll be a flake one. There's always a flake one. I don't think there was a flake one. Oh, there was a Cadbury's cream egg one, and the wrapper was green. Oh, yeah. Oh. That was just, yeah. That's history for you. Yeah. You see a Cadbury's mm -hmm. cream eggs through time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and a Cadbury's... So, I think there was a fruit and nut one, but there was another Cadbury's one. Because yeah. it was... Yeah, um, was that the Frank, Frank Muir? Muir? It was a fruit and yes. nut case. I don't think it was, Frank, it was fruit and nut, but it was Frank Muir. Mm -hmm. And it was Cadbury's. I can't remember which bar it was. Well, well, meanwhile, what's Master Spy like? <laughs> odd. It's odd. Yeah. Recommend you take a look before it gets. I, I taken think I, I don't think we want to say too much because no, we we've, 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 yeah. we've already noted it down as a very strong possible contender for a full mm. article. Just because it's so bloody yeah. odd, but and I want to see I, Warren's, I, Warren's expression. I used when to he watch sees it, it on. Yeah. Was it Saturday nights? Was it a Saturday night thing on ITV? Yes. I, I, I'm pretty sure I remember watching it. When it was on, it was about about three years of it. I haven't a clue what happened at all in it. I I just remember William Franklin. I remember uh, what's 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 the name of the 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 woman who was on it. Oh uh, yeah, Jenny Lee Wright. Miss Money Packer. Jenny Lee Wright. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can you can win all sorts of odd things, yes. can't you? Was what it was, was it celebs though, or was it? No, it's it just just members of the public. members of the public who can't quite act. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. they have what to What did act? they have to yeah. do? So what did they have to do to? They had to um, investigate things and try and work out, in the first one we watched, who the traitor was, and yeah. in the second one, mm. where the, some microfilm was hidden. Yeah, it's a sort of weird cross between Who Done It and 321, isn't yes. it? It's like, yes. <laughs> if you can imagine <laughs> that, that. that. Yeah, it doesn't bear thinking about it, does it? But yeah, wow. And one of the yeah, contestants wow. on the second one was very eccentric, Yeah, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. There's actually a point where he's doing something... And they cut back and they're just laughing because he's just 
We've Odd. lost the so, plot, isn't he? Don't like... don't mock the contestants. <laughs> Never mock the contestants. So, um, what what did they win? <laughs> oh, it's sort of electronic gubbins, yes, wasn't it? Like, he won. Um, what did he win? A complete music centre. A music centre, yeah. yeah oh. Or you some, some, oh, could win like a camera or. Um, yeah. All it's all this big, bulky electronic stuff. Yes, yeah. no, would, you couldn't get home on the train if you needed to. Yeah, not not I laser can't. shoes or anything like that. No, not laser shoes. Oh. <laughs> That's a great. No, show. it's not worth it then. Well, no, no I, shall, I shall have to try track one of those down. Are they on YouTube? Yes, yes. we we can point you in their direction. Don't worry. <coughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Right, and on that note, I think we'd better say <laughs> yes. thank you to Lisa. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Paul. And thank you very much. And thank you, Martin. And Thank we'll, you very much. We'll see you again soon. Okay. okay. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Take care. Take bye care. Bye bye.